macro strategy of what you're racing in. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you've got to get that kind of first level of this is how to drive the car and how to drive the car quickly and get that under you so you can start devoting more of your brain's capacity to actually focusing on the actual racing and not how to drive around the track quickly. If you're sitting there trying to figure out the track while in a race, it's kind of too late because your brain can't do both. They got It's got to be focused on one or the other. Um, so it'd be the kind of like the idea of um, if you were going to uh, ride a bike, let's say, and you were going to try to ride a bike and talk on a cell phone, you probably can do both, right? Or ride a bike and have a friend ride with you and talk to them while you're riding. You could probably do both because you know how to ride a bike and you have that experience underneath you. But if you had never ridden a bike before and you were trying to focus on, you know, actually pedaling properly and maintaining your balance, it'd be very difficult to also have a conversation with somebody else. Um, Racing is kind of the same thing. If you are at that level of bike riding where you're still trying to figure out how to stay on top of a bike, uh, it's going to be very difficult to also now throw other cars around you and, and race with any kind of effectiveness uh, and safety around others. So, you know, it's that level of got to get to a certain level of expertise before we can start getting to the racing. And that's kind of what you've got to do in terms of, you know, you got to make sure you understand what the car does, uh, how to control it if it's starting to slide, you know, how to find out what the car is doing or telling you just by feel. And then also the track you're driving, right? Really hard to track to race on a track you've never been on versus a track you know really well. So that's kind of a little bit of an introduction on what you want to think of. So I'm going to go ahead and open the first. Are there any questions on that kind of idea? And then I'm going to open up the video and kind of start going through these little points that I flagged. So is it like kind of the the the, uh, the idea of unconscious competence? Is that, it, is that kind of what you're going to ask? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, as soon as you can start to uh, get that competence underneath you, then your your brain that's kind of focused on the decision making is freed up that 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 bandwidth is freed up to tackle strategy of racing so what's going on around you how to set up a turn focusing on what the car is doing in front of you uh and not on the menial task of i gotta break out the three board turn it at the end of the curbing apex it here and track out here um in a race situation ideally you're not even thinking about that it just happens normally. It's like walking. Um, and uh, the, clo the the more comfortable you get with that competence without having to think about it, the easier it is to focus on the actual racecraft side of things. Um, so we'll just assume we're at a standard level of competence. Um, obviously, people that have more experience driving the cars and knowing how to drive quickly tend to have more of that competence and, and can devote more of their brain bandwidth to actual racing and racecraft. Um, but it, it's still all, it, it's kind of that drive within yourself. Um, like for myself, for instance, I've been doing it for a little bit. I have a level of competence, but if I start taking the car and I start pushing really hard and start going for like qualifying lap times, my bandwidth in my brain all of a sudden can't focus on racecraft and is focusing more on lap times. And so <laughs> it's very difficult to do both because I'm trying to be absolutely perfect on those brake markers and turn in points. And when I'm doing that, I can't focus as much on the racecraft aspect or I start to miss things. Uh, and it's just kind of that trade off. So even if you're not, you know, in the pro group um, or you're finding yourself, you know, racing at lap times that are maybe a little bit slower than the field, that doesn't mean you don't have the competence. Uh, it just means that uh, there's some room to work on your speed to get that competence in order to be able to uh, get to that same level where you're comfortable at. So. Just keep that Chris, in mind. Do you, do you find yourself context switching within the race, like between those, like, for example, working on the racecraft piece, and then let's say you've got gaps that you're trying to make up. Do you switch back over back yeah. to the, the, the quality pace type, type yes. uh, context? So if I've got nothing around me, if I've got open track and there's no, I can't see any cars in front of me and there's no one behind me. I can devote more of my brain and I'm not doing, I'm not like consciously saying, oh, I'm going to focus more on race or, you know, hitting my marks. Um, it just happens naturally. There's nothing else to focus on other than the track because there's no other cars. And therefore you start to automatically deviate into, well, in order to keep me razor sharp, I'm going to try to drive as best I can. 
once other cars start getting involved, those cars are going to start influencing the way you drive. Either they're on the apex when you want to be on the apex, um, or you know you got to brake a little earlier because you're two feet off their bumper, stuff like that. So you have to be more reactive versus if there's nothing around you, you set the tone, you dictate the pace, and you can devote more of your brain power to that. Um, so absolutely, you, there's definitely an ebb and flow. And personally for me, I find myself actually going faster when I'm chasing someone. Um, so if I've got a rabbit in front of me and I'm trying to chase down someone, my lap times actually tend to drop than if I'm just on my own. Uh, and it's something I've got to work on to be able to get to that razor sharpness without that rabbit. Um, but I think what happens, and, and it may be different for other people, but for me, if I'm not, if I don't have to specifically sit there and try to focus on my brake markers and everything, that tends to come naturally. So if I'm focused on trying to catch someone, I'm watching them and I'm not necessarily devoting my brain power to my, my active thought process to driving the track. I'm instead using that to focus on the car in front of me and think about what I'm going to do when I catch them. And I'm re- letting my, you know, that, that unconscious ability, the way you said it was perfect. Um, I'm letting that actually drive me around the track because I've done it plenty of times before. I know how to do it. The less I think about it, the better it goes. Anyway, it's kind of, I don't know if anybody plays golf. I, I grew up playing golf, but you know, the, the fewer swing thoughts you have when you're actually swinging a golf club, the better you're going to hit the ball. If you're sitting there thinking, I've got to take it back at this angle and on my way up and I've got to fire my hips at a certain time, you're never going to hit the ball properly, right? Uh, it's that kind of concept with driving too. So here we go. I'm going to open up the first one and... Um, this is a WRL event, uh, this past weekend at Barber Motorsports Park. I'm driving a 2016 981 GT4 Club Sport. Um, it has been detuned for WRL regulations because the stock Club Sport makes more power than would be allowed in here. And we are on street tires. We are not on slicks. Um, so the cars tend to, the tires tend to talk more (laughs) because it's street tires, um, and they last longer, uh, but they don't go as fast. So keep that in mind. Um, so what we are going to do, we I qualified, well, I didn't qualify, but the car qualified on a P19 out of a field of 29 cars in my class. Um, there are four classes in this race, and I think there were something like over 60 cars total. So there's a lot of different classes constantly coming up. So there's always traffic playing a part in these WRL races. So the first one I'm going to go to is minute eight. And I'm going to make sure I turn this down a little bit so it's not so loud. So I'm going to go to minute eight and we're going specifically right here. Okay. So this car that's over here on the left is the 983 car. It's also a 981 Club Sport, GT4 Club Sport. So we're very similar in, uh, in cars. In fact, that I actually drove that car last year at this event that specific one. So I'm familiar with it and how it handles. Um, We're coming out of the museum section at Barber. As you can see, there's the museum right in front of us. And we're coming up into that first little S section before the back straight. Um, We're early on in the race. In fact, this is the the very first lap of the race. So tires are still cold. Um, And I want to try to get by this guy as fast as possible because every single car that's in front of me is a car for position in class. So I don't want to get hung up behind him. And I don't know his pace right off, but based on what had happened in practice, that car is not doesn't have the fastest drivers in it. And I know I can be faster, so I want to get by him. Um, so we're coming up into the S's, and my thought process here is I want to back this corner up. So the S's are a very fast section of the barber track, but at normal qualifying pace, the way I tend to take it is I drive it in really hard, tap the brakes in the middle to to get a little weight on the nose, get the front end turned, and then get back on the gas. But that ends up having the second part of the uh, the S is as, you know, I, I'm taking it as fast as I can, but I'm definitely hitting the brake in there. You can go have a faster exit speed for the S's if you can get to throttle earlier. So I'm going to do what's called back up the corner. So I'm going to play it first so you can kind of see what's going on, and then I'll explain what's going on.
Okay, so you see what I did? Now I'm right up alongside him going into the tunnel section. I backed up the corner. And so if I rewind it just a touch, back to the beginning of the S's. Oh, that's too far. Okay, so back to here. I'm right on him. Like, I'm right on his bumper. If I stay in the throttle, I could I could technically be like an inch off his rear bumper. And some may say, well, that's great. If you're as really close to him, it, it will help you pass him um, because you don't have as much distance to, to cover. Um, but if you back the corner up and you give up the first part of the corner, he's going to gap you a little bit. But you're going to get a better run coming off. And the second part after the S's is, is much faster than this first part. So I'm sacrificing the slow part of the corner in order to go relatively faster in the second part. And that's how I get a run on him coming out of it. I also do something else. So when I come up here, I actually fake that I'm gonna to try to dive bomb him here, right? So I stick my nose, I'm over here on track right, and then I kind of make an abrupt movement over to the left, and and I act like I'm gonna go ahead and send it up the inside. So like right here, I've moved over, I haven't gotten out of my throttle. To him, if you're in this car and you see the car behind you all of a sudden duck on your inside coming into a corner, you're thinking he's gonna to try to outbreak me going into this corner. Um, that's the natural thing to do. But I have no intention of doing that. It's a really fast corner, Trying to do that one is not only risky, even if I'm successful in doing it and going too wide through there, we're going to lose pace to those two cars that are in front of us. And I want to pass them as well. I don't want to just pass the purple car. So I fake that I'm going to dive bomb them. And then I get out of my, I get out of the throttle. So I'm out of it right now. I'm out of the throttle. He's taking it in as deep as he can because he thinks he's going to have to race me to the apex of the first corner. So I'm completely out of the throttle and watch the gap that he moves on me. Right there. He's got like two car lengths on me when I was an inch off his bumper. But he's still on the brakes. You can actually still see his brake lights. I'm getting on full throttle at this point. So while he's slowing down, I'm actually accelerating. And that results in that speed difference. I've made up that gap he made on me. And I've got about two, three miles an hour on him going down the straightaway as a result. So there's an example of backing up the corner focusing on your exit of the corner in order to get a run on your competitor. It doesn't al you don't always have to outbreak your opponent to pass them. You can set the corner up in such a way that you get a better run coming out of it and pass them on the straight. In fact, that's the safer way to do it. Any questions? Did you did you consider that's awesome. Very cool. Did you consider doing that like in like the 7A uh, a B, 8A, and B complex too, or is that just too too technical? So, okay, let's go back to there. I can show you what's going on. Since it's the first lap, all the cars are kind of door to door. They're in two lanes. And I actually take him too wide through here. So, as you can see, and he does a good job of giving me room. Um, he doesn't go across my nose, but we can't take it too wide. But he gets a better run off of it because I have to keep it nice and tight, and he can use all the track on the exit. So, he actually gets a better run coming out of there. But it's at this point that I realize that I'm close enough that I can make that move coming up in the next corner. So I'm thinking about it probably a couple turns before this, like going into the going into the museum section. I've already kind of got a plan for the S's if the museum section doesn't play out in my favor. Now, of course, if I can get up on him, like if I was door to door with him right now, I'd take him into the S's. But because I'm not, it allowed me to do the whole backing up to try to get a run on him. Okay. So the next one I've got is at the 17 mark. That's not there. Yellow, 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 yellow. Okay, so we're coming up on, well, it says 1752, but that's, okay. Maybe it's coming up with these beamers. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Or maybe not. I think I type, I miswrote my timestamps on my notes. Um, okay, so I remember what I did here. Okay, so I've got a TCR in front of me. I've got this Haggerty car over here that's also in my class. And I've got these BMWs, there's actually three of them that I'm chasing down. And this is just a pack, all of these are per position. Um, 
we're coming into the uh, tight hairpin, Charlotte's Web, however you want to call it, turn. And, you know, it's one of those turns that the ideal line is a nice wide line and getting on throttle on your exit coming out. Um, i am got the ideal line, but the Haggerty car does not have the ideal line on me. But he does have, or she, it's actually, um, uh, her name is Sarah. I forget her last name, but it's a she. Uh, she has position on me, and she's going to be faster to apex than I am, and I've already I've already accepted that. Um, but what I'm focused on is I want to try to get a run on the pack of cars. So I take a wide line in, let her get ahead of me, take the apex. I don't want to be not side by side with her going through the apex because that's going to slow me down. And I want to tuck in behind her and kind of get that run, that ideal run relative to the rest of these cars. So I've taken a little bit wider. Apex a little bit later, and I'm trying to get to throttle as soon as possible. I don't do the best job, but I do a job good enough to get a run on the TCR and follow her through. But you see my speed difference relative to her because she had to take that corner so tight, it resulted in me getting that better run off turn five, passing the TCR, and keeping pace with Sarah in front of me. So that's kind of what was going on that one. So if we go to time step 20. Okay, so this is an instance where Nope. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So 21 Okay, so this was an example of a, a lap car, which is the Miata here, staying on line and doing what it needs to do. So coming through the S's, Sarah takes a really aggressive move to get by the Miata, but the Miata knows we're coming. He's already been passed by three of us. He knows that the GTO class, the, high, the, the fast class is coming through. So he does what he can do best. He can't disappear off the track. So he's on apex here. But he declares a line and he demonstrates by positioning his car what he intends to do. And that is, I'm going to hug the inside of this corner and based on his movements, grabbing that and not going as fast as he possibly can, he's showing me that he's not going to track out all the way to track out. And also, Sarah helps that fat because she's right next to him. But you see, he pinches the corner, which allows me to stay full throttle all the way through. So that's an example of... If you're a lap car, you just want you did you know, he's not he can't get on the radio and say pass left like we do in our races sometimes. But he's positioning in his car and telling me that by the way he's driving. And I saw that before the corner. So I was confident in that I could stay in the gas and pass him on the left without worrying about him coming across in front of me. Alright, let's go twenty four. Alright, what do we got on twenty four? Oh, uh, indecision. That's fun. Oh, my times are all off, and I really apologize for that. I went through all these videos and looked at everything, and unfortunately, I am not seeing the correct timestamps in some of these, so I apologize for that. Um, all right, let's see if 2742 works. Okay, so that's not, that's not. Okay, this is a good one. Is he right? No, he's not. Uh, I, I really do apologize. I had all of these lined up. All right, so I want to go to the next one. Maybe I can find some. So 2806.
Yeah. All my timestamps are all messed up. All right, let's go to the next one. Stint two. Oh, that's what's going on. Hold on, hold on. 24. Okay, so... Okay, so 1752. All right, so I've got these three. This is the three BMWs. I've got these three BMWs that are in front of me. They're two M2s and a, I think this is a 235 IR. Um, I've got, I've been behind this red one for about, at this point, I want to say almost an hour trying to pass them and I can't do it. We have very similar speeds. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it from this point. Um, this doesn't represent the entire thing, but what I've been doing for the past hour behind the red one is seeing where he's fast, seeing where he's slow. And now we've caught a pack of cars that will kind of throw everything up in the air and we're all for position. So we've got to deal with some traffic, as you can see, coming up with the BMW or that that slow car, which is a, a lower class car. But all of these guys in front of us are starting to fight. Um, in fact, you can see how close they're getting through Charlotte's Web here. Um, the blue car makes a really good move on the two car and kind of just muscles his way through. But he's not really getting away from the pack. And so I'm sitting here just kind of seeing what's going on, who's going to end up being the benefactor of all this. And at this point, I'm kind of hoping that they kind of line up and I can start trying to pick them off one by one instead of trying. It's really difficult to pass one car, let alone three at once. So I'm kind of content right now for just sitting behind them. The red car has had pace, like I said, for a long time. Um, and I haven't been able to pass them on sheer pace. So I'm hoping that maybe with some traffic, some pressure from me behind, and then I'm having to deal with a car before in front will slow him down and allow me to pass. Um, but again, all through here, I'm studying his line. I'm studying where he's fast, where he's slow relative to me, where he breaks to get an idea of where I can finally pounce and make my move. And it's this next lap where I make that move. And it's going to be coming into turn 11. So here we go, coming down the straightaway into turn one. Still haven't made my move yet. Kind of waiting on it. I kind of look to the inside to see how you would react to this. I think that I have him here and I can make a pick, but he does a good job of staying door to door with me. He's still there and he has the ideal line going through the carousel. Um, I can't pass on the outside there, so I have to get out of it. Coming into Charlotte's Web, I'm nowhere close enough to make a move on him under braking. We have some lap traffic that I might be able to deal with, but I believe they just all stay out of the way. For the most part, the Lexus was a menace all weekend. Coming into the stadium section, I've lost some ground because I had a terrible run out of that corner. But we've got lap traffic coming up in front, and they're still battling nose to tail. So now, we're just like with that purple car from the beginning of this talk, um, I'm starting to think of, okay, maybe I can back a corner up and, and put some pressure on the red car. I haven't decided yet. We've got some traffic up front they may have to slow for. And I get a mega run coming through the S's because I backed it up. I have to actually get out of the gas here. And I just dive it down the inside. And I take two for one. So that's the move that I wanted to show. Um, coming into that turn 11, I had been watching that red car break at about the two and a half board. And I knew I could break at the two board and still make that corner stick. I'd done it in practice. I had done, those were my fast lap times. Coming into here, they're too wide. The red car obviously has a run on the, this car over here on the left. I know they're gonna be too wide and try to take it side by side going in there. But at the same time, we all know that two cars going side by side can't go as fast as one car by itself. So I kind of take advantage of that. And 
originally I wanted to maybe make a move with my momentum around the outside, but the red car completely closed that off. In fact, to such an extent that I actually had to get out of the gas. But he's so concerned with this two car, and I know this two car <coughs> has been slow through this section even more so than the red car. And since the two car has a pos you know position on track over the red car, that means the red car is going to have to slow down. He can't go around the outside in here. And because the two car is always slower, I know I can outbreak the two car. So at this point where I'm saying to myself, I know all the only car I have to outbreak here is the, is this two car over here on the left because the red car is going to take care of himself. And that's exactly what I do. I bring it on the inside. He's already been on the brake since the three board. This guy's on the brake since the three board. The two board is just on the other side of this car. And I break at my mark, which is the two board. These guys are already slowing down and you can see the speed differential. And that's how I was able to get by them. So one more time coming down the straight. I think I can make a move on the outside. They close the door, send it down the inside, break up my point on the two board, and make it stick because I knew I could make it do it. The only way that works though is I know that I can break it two and make it stick. Um, if I don't know that, that's not a move that you should be making because if you take that too fast or you're not confident that they're going to take, you know, break at the three board, then you can take them out. Um, but based on what I had seen, lap after lap after lap, that's what ended up happening. All right. Yep. In that case, Chris, were you were you offline? You were off your normal racing line there, right? So the braking distance is a little shorter than it normally would have been, right? Yeah, so I'm way offline. Like I'm I'm three car widths off where I want to I want to be where the red car is, right? And I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I do know because this turn kind of opens up that there is room like the ideal line through this corner is you you go into it and you don't drift past half track because you got to go right so you don't want to like take this like a normal turn track out all the way to track right because then you've got to take go right around the uphill section so ideally if you're on a qualifying lap you're on the outside you apex it normally but you don't track out past half track so you can turn in and take the second corner properly but because I'm not concerned with the second corner here, I'm only concerned with this first one, I can take that extra speed, track out normally, like like a normal corner would be, go past half track, so I'm past half track. Now, normally I would be right around here, another car width to the left to set up my right-hander, but because I don't care about it at this point because I, my target was to pass those guys, I can carry that extra piece of speed through the corner, and this corner is going to be a, is, is a junker at this point, but that's how I made it stick. All right, so now I think maybe my times are appropriate. Okay, so yeah, this is this one. So this Miata, it's another, this is a slower car, class car. I'm coming up on it, but he declares his line very quickly and very soon. I also know him and I know he's a very good driver. Um, he's actually an ex Formula 2 driver. He comes through here. I know he's going to be predictable, but how many times have we in, in PCA races when coming up on lap traffic or a slower car come around a corner like this? We say we're going to pass on the inside and then that car right here moves over to try to get out of your way, right? You know, it's the old adage of the slower car trying to get out of the way of the faster car. I want you to be able to pass me. Um, he holds his line is what I'm trying to say lets me go he never lifts he holds this line it's the faster car's responsibility to try to figure out how to get by so that's what we learn with this one is don't try to get out of people's way drive your line if you are going to drive offline declare it way in advance so the faster cars can figure out where you're going so that's where that that one comes from all right 24 Yeah, I was on the wrong video earlier, and that's why that happened. So on twenty four twenty one, indecision. Oh yes, okay. Coming up on a slower car in front. Another lesson in lapping or passing slower cars, whether it be by class or pace. Going through the carousel, there's only really one line through it, um, but I know I'm going to get a run on him going up the hill, just because of the car difference. 
but right here indecision um i don't know if he's gonna go for the apex or he's gonna leave me a car in between right i i don't i don't think anybody can see this and say oh yeah he's he's definitely leaving me a car or oh he's gonna go to the apex so i can't pass him here um safely uh you know if i try to and i've seen a lot of people on sim try to force it up the inside you're probably going to end up with a, an incident so I have to get out of the throttle, slow down to his pace to figure out what he's going to do before I can actually finish the pass. If he were able, if he would have declared a line very clearly to me, at this point, I would already have my nose by him. But because I couldn't tell what he was going to do, I had to slow down and I probably lost a second and a half. He also slowed down because he's probably looking in his mirror saying, what is this car going to do? Is he going to dive me on the inside here? Um, you know, is he going to wait on me? And he's out of the throttle as well. So he's going slower as well. So both cars probably lose at least a second going up this hill because he didn't, he wasn't confident and didn't declare a line. So I'll play at full speed so you can see what it looks like. Watch how, if you were in this position, what would you do? Look at the speed difference on me. Like I said, we were both slower as a result. So the lesson here is if you're the faster car, you have to, one, make sure you know what that car, the slower car, is going to be doing. Because if I sent it there and he went to the apex and I caused a collision, it's my fault because I'm the one passing. Um, two, if you are the slower car, the thing we ask is that you just drive with conviction. You make your decision for better or worse and you drive that way. Don't second guess yourself. Um, it's the responsibility of the faster car to get by you. And as a result, if you declare that line and he would have declared that apex, I could have passed him on the outside without having to even lift. Um, but because I didn't know which way he was going to go, we both were slower. Any questions on that one? That's an important one and pretty relative to what we do here. Is in, in real life, Chris, is that coming out of the carousel? I guess what's that turn four? Is that really sketchy as far as like off being off camber there like was that no. car no it's not no especially in that car because of the speed um so at this point right here even in my car <coughs> so all these cars the nice thing about this series is all these cars have pretty much the same cornering grip because of the tires um it's not like i have more cornering grip than he does we're both using the same tires um so at this point he would he should be full throttle when he gets to this apex He's right on line, and he should be absolutely just absolutely pinned all the way up the hill. Um, but he's not. Uh, and that's because he doesn't know where I'm going, and he didn't declare a line. Um, but in my car, I could leave a car and a half at apex here going up the hill and still be flat out and, and, and have plenty of room on the track left uh, to make a pass mid-corner. In fact, I do it a few times. So. I have a question for you, Chris. Sure, Jim. Uh, say he declared his line. If that was me in the yellow uh spec up there i would have come closer to apex and left you absolutely no room so you would have had to go on outside mm -hmm. uh, i would have stuck at full throttle maybe he was maybe he wasn't but i would have stuck right onto that apex because i know that's the fast line and that would have forced you to go uh on the left and i would have been comfortable having you pass me before the next corner is that what you were hoping he was going to do? Or were you hoping he was going to stay more to his left? Off -line? That's a very good point. So I have probably didn't help the situation because I was a little bit on the inside here. But from experience on passing on this particular corner, because it's a really good passing zone, at this point, I'm expecting to track out to the curbing and go around his outside. His car position and his delay, because at this point, usually most cars have already started tucking in to the apex. At this point, his delay in turning in makes me think, and it's it, we're talking split second, like a tenth of a second. Sure. Um, at this point, because he's left this gap right here, I can see it based on my car. I'm thinking, oh, he's going to leave me. He's going to leave me a car with to go soaring up the inside. So that's why I make an adjustment and bring it towards the inside, which I would normally do. So I'm on my normal line here through this corner. Right. But at this point, he looks like he's closing it down and I'm left with nowhere to go. And I get out of the throttle as a result. Um, 
I'm sure we'll come across a point where I take that same corner uh, behind a slower car, and I'll show you how properly it's done uh, with it when I know what the guy in front of me is doing. But this is just an example, like I said, of that indecision on his part slowing us both down. It, 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 it's the thought process you have to go through because he's showing indecision. If, if he had stuck one side or the other, you would have known he wasn't coming inside unless he actually stuck that, and then you could have gone outside. Absolutely. Uh, but because you didn't know where he was going, it slowed you both up, and that's that's fine. The safe thing was, you know, hold off uh, and make the pass on the straight. Uh, you could have gotten by earlier, but that would have made... Uh, that would have been a conscious decision by him to know where you were going to go. It looked like he was like, uh, I don't know, do I, do I not? And that forces you to lay off. Absolutely. Um, so this next one is a similar situation, but instead we've got a race on our hands. Um, I just passed that red BMW from earlier in the video, uh, and he's right on my ass. Um, and we're going into turn one, and we've got lap traffic. And in my mind, I'm trying to gap the guy that I just passed but there's these slower traffic and this and when i say slower these guys are only one class down from us so they're, they're only running like three laps or three seconds a lap slower than i am it's really not that big a difference so and then there's some other even slower cars mixed in there for good measure um so we've, we've got a situation coming up here i make a mistake here and that's one of the things that i like about this particular clip is because it shows that i can make mistakes too um but as long as we learn from our mistakes, we won't do them again, hopefully. So going into turn one, again, this BMW is on my butt. You can't see it, but he is. And what I want to do coming around the carousel is I want to get her past this BRZ because he is two classes slower than me. I don't want to be stuck behind him going all the way around the carousel because that's going to be painful, especially with my competitor right behind me. So I made the decision probably about here that I'm going to pass this BRZ at the entrance to the carousel. So I'm going to follow this Nissan and I get here and I'm stuck. I am in trouble here at this point. I have no grip. I am not online. I'm in the marbles. Camper's falling away. There's no way. I realize at this point, there's no way I'm going to get around this BRZ. The BMW saw that. And what does he do? He parks his bumper right off that BRZ's bumper. And so we advance the video. I can't get over online because there's a BMW there. And he completes the pass on me because I was greedy trying to get past the lap car way too early. I couldn't make that pass um, and I lost my position as a result. However, this has a good ending and happy ending because just as we talked about this corner, you know, before, um, I know that BRZ is probably going to do what most cars do is go straight to Apex. So what do I do? I keep my foot in it and I displace that Apex by a car width. And I actually use the BRZ as a pick <laughs> to get my place back. Um, so it's an example of just because you catch a slower car at a spot on track doesn't mean you should pass them when you catch them. Uh, it could slow you down, it can slow him down, and nobody wins in that situation. Ideally, what would have happened is I would have tucked in behind that BRZ at the beginning part of this turn. So right here, I would have tucked, I would have slowed down, tucked in behind him, stayed behind him, and then got on the gas coming out of the carousel. But because I tried to get around him early on, I'm offline, I'm in a bad position, I get boxed out. And I'm in a place where I lost the position. Now, the BMW, if he would have been smart, would have pulled in front of me <laughs> and gone. But I don't think he knew he was clear of me. And that played in my favor. Looks like he could have also uh, tried a similar line to you. But it is slower because you're offline. Uh, it's a longer corner. I think what he was thinking, he got in the situation I got in, I think, with, the, um, with that Boxster from the previous lap. I think at this point, he thinks that he can get that apex from the BRZ. That's what he's thinking. He's thinking, this BRZ is going to let me have this apex. You can see his movement. See, look, he's almost a car width inside. But the BRZ comes over to the apex and completely boxes him out. 
that's what was going on was he's thinking he could take the, the apex away um but he couldn't he got boxed in <laughs> so anyway I, I thought that one was a funny one um all right 2806 so not much further along oh okay another slow traffic thing meandering how many times have you been driving along if and you're about to get lapped but you don't know it you don't know there's a car coming up behind you and you're kind of just meh, driving around the middle of the track down a straightaway right um it's happened to me i've done it um everybody's done it watch this i think it's the i think it's the, the 350z here so we're coming down the straightaway i've got speed on all these cars straight line speed and look at him he's displaced it but now he's meandering over you see that so i'm thinking okay he stopped moving over he's leaving a car with for me to come through and then when i'm here i'm thinking okay he's he's declared this line this is where he's gonna be and i can just shoot it up online down the left side of the track he starts moving over all of a sudden i've got a very narrow window right when i'm about to pass him um and that's the meandering thing that i'm talking about um he came out of that corner he's probably trying to draft off this car in front of him so he's just watching his rear bumper and just trying to follow where he goes um but by doing that he's driving down the middle of the track and then slowly moving over this car that's up here doesn't need to be online because i'm not passing them this car needs to be declaring a line moves over i mean i i remember on this i actually put two in the grass to pass him um, because he squeezed me and i guarantee you he didn't know i was here um so that's the the danger we've got here is that when you're the slower class or you're getting passed and lap traffic's coming through declare your line get to your line as quickly as you can safely so you don't end up in a situation where again there's indecision um so that's where that one comes from are these helpful All right, so next one, we're going to go into stint two. What did you do with that car right there? Oh, that one? It's going to ask the same thing. Yeah. What did I do with that one? Um, no, that's not it. You, you guys don't want to see a pit stop. Uh, what was it? That was... What time was that? That was... That was 27 something. It was 27 something? Oh, it's right here. Okay. So this is where it was. Um, I think I tuck in behind them through the museum. Yeah, I lift. Tuck in behind them. Because, again, these cars all go through these corners the same speed. And wait till I get a good spot to make my pass. And here's another thing on that one. Actually, that's a good point. Um, I've raced against this person before. I know they're fast. When we're going into the S's here, like we had talked before, going too wide is not the fast way through here, right? They see that I'm making my move and that I'm going to go through here. If she would have stayed on it, we would have gone too wide and we would have both been incredibly slow through there. Instead, she cracked the throttle to let me complete my pass before the turn. So if you're the slower car, sometimes it behooves you to sacrifice a tenth of a second right here so you don't lose an entire second in the corner. So like right here, look at that speed difference. That's not because my car's just all of a sudden gained 20 um, miles an hour on her. It's because she cracked the throttle ahead of time to let me buy and complete my pass so we can take it single file rather than going too wide. Is that Laura Hayes, out of curiosity? I think so. I'm not totally sure. Uh, it's Thunder Bunny Racing? Thunder Bunny. Yeah, okay. So, Pretty sure it is. So it's Laura. Laura she's, yeah, she's cool. Yeah, she's really cool. She's really, really quick. Uh, at, at NOLA earlier this year when we got completely drenched and it was a monsoon at the start of the second race, um, she was right on my ass for lap after lap. Even though she was in a slower car, I could not run her because of the I had no grip. Yeah, she, I think she grew up like racing quarter midget cars. Yeah, uh, dirt 
I believe it. She's 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 quick. She... That's a that's a really good example of a car that's going to get passed regardless. You know it's coming. She picked a good spot. She laid off, tucked in behind, lost almost nothing. Life is good. That doesn't, you know, that just that's just good racecraft. She just picked a good spot. Uh, so lift for a second, you got her on. Yep. So uh, piggybacking on that, that same exact corner. Here's what happens when you go too wide. So slower class car over here on the left. I'm chasing these two cars in front of him. Too wide. Watch the gap. Look how much I lost going too wide through that same exact corner. I lost 10 car lengths, maybe more. And in fact, the Aston tried to make a move on me and I said no. But um, you could see how two cars going through a corner are so much slower than one car on its own. And that's why I picked that particular timestamp. Uh, 1440. Oh, okay, so, uh, wait. Oh, never mind. When did I pass this guy? Let me see, hold on. To show you the idea of going through here and how you how I want to do it. This is what I was trying to do on that Boxster. But because it was a Miata, I had a little more time to get my car next to him to make that pass, so. Right here, box or the Miata's tracking out. I'm able to get the speed on him. I'm able to get my car in here, so he knows that, okay, I got a car on the inside, so I'm gonna take the wide line. So I kind of force him. I make the decision for him on that one. Um, so, all right, uh, you so. Would, you had declared your line, so he then had to uh, need that, because at that point you were there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so backing up a corner to get a run uh, on this car that's in front of me. Coming into the museum, you can see the speed that I close up on him, but I actually overslow a little bit so I can get a little bit of room to get a run coming out of museum. And you can see the speed difference coming out of that corner and how I'm starting to gain, starting to gain, and then I get back out of it, get on throttle early while he's braking, and then you'll see the speed difference going down the straight, and that's because I backed the corner up, enabling me to send it down the inside and get the pass done. So backing up the corner uh, in such a way that I can take advantage of the speed coming out. Um, 1829, only got a few more. Oops, sorry. Chris, quick question where you're going sure. to the next queue and up the next one. So you, the, there are a couple times you sent it down the inside there. Did you practice that offline into that corner before the race, like in the practice sessions? Just out of curiosity. Uh, no, actually I didn't. Okay. Um, but I had had enough opportunities before I made them count with like lap traffic to know that I could do it. Gotcha. So it wasn't like the first time that I did it. I was like, oh, it worked. <laughs> no, I knew that it, it would work. Um, I hadn't gone out there during practice and specifically practiced it, but there's so much traffic in this race. I'm always passing a car. Most corners I was taking offline rather than taking online because I'm always passing somebody. Um, so I had known from that before. Um, so 1829, I don't know what I have is declare your line early. Oh, okay. So, hey, it's our Boxster friend, <laughs> right? Um, but he does a good job this time. So I'm following him into the S's. Um, well, we'll back it up a little bit because I passed this car. Um, so, you know, just to pat myself on the back. Again, get a good run on him. It's all about runs. If you can make your passes occur before turns, even better. Watch him declare his line. He declared very early that he was going to drift over to the right and get on the proper racing line and not stay over on the left to quote unquote, let me by. So let's back it up again. I'll show it again at full speed. He doesn't meander. He doesn't wait over on the left side and slowly drive to the right. It is definitive. I'm moving to the right. 
which tells me very quickly that's where he intends to be, which means I can just keep my line going out of the turn and making the pass. That's how you do it when you're coming out of a turn with a faster car coming up behind you. Uh, 3446. This is just me being a bully. Um, that was uh, four wide, huh? Yeah, I think that was four wide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is me backing up a corner to get a run again. Um, so coming up through here, rather than being two feet off of his bumper, I actually slow it way down, take a better line than he did going through the corner, so I can get a run coming out catch back up to him, do the same thing here. Notice the trend with this corner of me, back it up, back on throttle early. And you can see the speed differential versus me and him coming out of the corner. And I'm able to make my pass before the turn. It's probably the most efficient way to make it. I, you always hear about people out breaking other people, right? Going into a corner and you guys get in a breaking duel, side by side, break as late as you possibly can in order to get to the apex first, right? You, that's kind of what we think about. But in reality, at least for me, I'm not the best late breaker in the world. I tend to break a little earlier than most folks. So I use that to my advantage. I get the car nice and settled and I focus on trying to get to the throttle as soon as I can to get a good run out of the corner so I can make a pass on the straightaway following the turn. It's safer to do it that way. I'm not battling somebody at the apex. Um, I'm passing someone because I've got two miles an hour on them on the straight. Yeah, I'll have less incidents. Um, oh, okay, the start of the next video, and then we'll be done. Uh, and then I'll launch the server. I've already got it set up. I just have to click launch. Chris, question for you, though, is when yeah. you back the corner up like that, are you compromising your overall speed or lap time compared to doing, like, the optimum line through the corner? So if, if I didn't have a car to contend with, yes, I would be going slower than the optimal lap through there but because i have a car in front of me i can't do the optimal lap anyway so it doesn't make it my the only concern i have at that point is how do i get past that car not about that particular lap time um so that's why backing up that corner going a little slower in and faster out makes me faster relative to that car that i'm battling allowing me to get the pass done so overall yeah that lap is going to be um, probably significantly slower than a normal qualifying lap with no traffic um, I wouldn't do that if I was out by there by myself because it would slow me down. It's not as fast. Okay, thanks. Um, this is an example of making a pass without making a pass. Um, this green uh, Mustang GT4 car, he's quick in certain areas, not quick in others, but he gets rattled. So instead of trying to make a risky pass on him, I just park my car off his rear bumper and let him make a mistake. So let's watch this half a lap. We've also got traffic up in front of him. So even if I were to make a dangerous pass, it's not like I would get away from him because I'm going to have to contend with those cars in front anyway. And he's also got the legs on the straightaway. I don't think his car is legal. <laughs> um, so we're coming through. We've got lap traffic in front. And then I just put the car on his rear. He knows I'm there. Make him think about things by peeking on the inside. I didn't have any intention of actually passing over there. He's more focused on me than the actual lap traffic. Coming down the straightaway, we should be able to get past this lap traffic pretty easily. But again, he's worried about me, and he makes a mistake coming out of one. Breaks way too late. And drives himself off the track. So that's an example of making a pass just by pressuring somebody. I didn't dive my nose anywhere. I didn't make a risky move. I just parked it off his rear bumper, let him make the mistake and get out of my way. Driving his mirrors, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Trust me, everybody gets rattled when you got a car literally filling up, filling up your entire rearview mirror. Like, 
if you look in your rearview mirror and you see the car right behind you, and then you go through a turn, you look at him, and he's on your right side, and then he's on your left side. Yeah, you're you're worried about him and not driving your line. Trust me. <laughs> and then bonus little footage. Where is it? Just to show you that everybody's human. Coming into turn or the carousel. I overcook it. I save it, but I overcook it. So here's a little drift for the ladies. So there you go. Anyway, that's all I got. Where, Any... Where's your purple WRL car? Oh, he's gone, man. I passed him a long time ago. No, well, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not racing with them. I'm racing with this team now. Um, for, for other reasons. Um, but um yeah no i i passed them a long time ago <laughs> left them left them for dead oh, it, yeah it, it seems like they got your number every couple of races yeah yeah but um we we definitely beat them in this race um and um yeah so in my first stint the very first stint before my pit stop we started 19th and i drove the car to p8 uh so i passed a lot of cars in my class passed a lot of obviously uh slower traffic but it, you're able to do it and um yeah it's just you got to keep your head on your shoulders especially with all of this um with everything going on in four classes and cars constantly coming at you you've got to just be you got to be smart about it um so anyway that is what's going on um if you have any questions i'm here to answer them um what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to hit go on the session so it should be created so give it a minute or two and the uh, the central practice session for sebring will be going live the password is capital s sunset and um yeah if you have any questions what i also am doing and i was doing at the same time is i'm actually loading that complete first stint on youtube and i can make a post on it if you want to watch it in its entirety without me breaking it up um but uh yeah i'm happy to answer any questions I wanted to ask you, Chris, uh, just because I really like these conversations and I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, well, one of the things that is so crucial is when you say backing up a corner, uh, it's, it's really just following the guy not too close so that you can get a run on him while he's under braking, you're now under pass. And you're taking a couple of corners way slower than you know you can, but you're not going to get that pass on the corner. You're going to get it on the straight. So backing it up means just wait, 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 get extra slow into a corner. You know you can get full throttle out of it, but still wait. And before you get to that corner, get wide open throttle. So while they're still on braking, you're now starting to close. And then that passes a piece of cake. But it takes sometimes three, four, five corners. It's a chess game. Where can I get it? I know I can't do it here. No, ah, three corners up ahead. I'm going to slow down now. So if you're too close, you're going to have to get on the brake when he gets on the brake because you're taking the corner high speed. But if you back way out of it, watch your delta. It's, it's deep in the red. But the minute you get on the gas, it's fun. You've never climbed there before. That's because you came in so slow that you were able to get out so quick. Yeah. And and to go along with that, right? Yes, you're not doing your optimal time by doing that, but because you're fighting with a car, you're not going to be doing your optimal lap times anyway. Unless you guys have the exact same lap times and you're driving as hard as you can just to keep up with him, that's a different story. But if you come up on him, you're you're you know you're faster than he is. The easiest way, in my opinion, to get around someone is to back up, make make them have to think they have to defend going into a corner. So they're going to take the corner offline. They're going to drive it in as hard as they can because they're afraid of you out breaking them. So what do you do? You just back it up a little bit, get your braking done a little early, get to throttle a lot sooner than them, and you're just going to motor by them on the way out. Um, it's the good drivers that realize when you're starting to do that, and they will compensate by driving the line because they know you're not going to dive them, and then at that point you dive them. But that's the chess match that you have with your opponents when you're driving, um, is you can fake things, right? Like with that purple car at the very beginning that I showed you guys, um, 
I faked that I was going to go on his inside, but I never had the intention to do that. So that made him break later, offline, try to defend. And instead, I got out of the throttle, got online, and focused on getting a run out. So I had five miles an hour on him coming out. That kind of strategy is, that's what racecraft is all about. And, and it's a mind game. And, and like I said before, you're going fast. The cars are going fast. The decisions are being made relatively quickly. But when you start getting that level of unconscious competence in driving, you can devote more of your brain to making decisions like that. How do I set this guy up in two turns? Oh, I'm coming up to the hairpin at Sebring. That's a place where I want to make sure I get a really good run out so I can go through Fangio really fast and get a run on them before the next turn. So you're thinking about that at turn three when that's turn seven. And if you have that unconscious competence, you can devote your brain to actually think about that when you're behind the wheel rather than having to focus on your brake marker for two is, you know, the three cones and then I've got to turn in early and trail break. In. You, when you're racing, you shouldn't have to think about any of that. That should just happen normally because you've you've put in your practice ahead of time. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. That was really cool to see. Yeah, and like I said, I'm I'm always around. Feel free to message me either on Discord or if you find me, just hit me hit me up with something. I usually it pops up on my phone as well. So <laughs> message me if I got some time. I'm happy to hop in a channel with anybody and just chat about anything. I love this stuff, so this is this is fun. Um, but uh, yeah, any questions whatsoever as they come up, feel free to to just shoot me a message or grab me and ask me. Uh, if anybody wants some ride-alongs, where we're about to do Sebring, so if you guys you know, aren't really comfortable with Sebring, let us know. Um, we can either do a track walk or, you know, we can maybe watch a few of the laps and give a couple of pointers. Um, you know, we can, if you want, you can hop in our car or you can hop in my car and I'll drive some hot laps and I'll tell you what I'm thinking when I go around. Um, we're here to help you guys. So, but that's all I got. Thanks, Chris. Sounds awesome stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. Awesome. I might jump on for a few.